Hey everybody, it's Angie from Trips with Angie. Welcome to the Symphony of the Seas. In this video, I'm gonna take you all around the ship, checking out all the public areas, the restaurants, and all the great pools. There's so much for kids and kids at heart alike to do on this ship. Now, I will tell you, it does seem to feel crowded sometimes, but I am so impressed with Royal Caribbean's commitment to entertainment. The shows we saw were incredible, and I'll share some snippets with you. So let's get started. We're gonna start on deck three. Deck three has the main floor of the main dining room or restaurant. This is included and available for breakfast and dinner daily, plus lunch on sea days. For dinner, you have an option between an early dining time, a late dining time, or any time dining. For early or late dining, you will eat at the exact same time every evening at the same table with the same set of waiters. This is a terrific choice if you're traveling with a larger group because it makes it much easier to get a table all together. Heading from deck three, we'll go up the stairs to deck four. I love how Royal Caribbean has these huge art pieces in the stairwell. If you're really into art, that is a great spot to go. Deck four continues with the main dining room and restaurant. The other option is the anytime dining, and this has two ways to go about it. One, you can make a reservation each evening in the Royal Caribbean app. So this is a great option if you're having different shore excursion times, you may want to eat at different times throughout the journey. You may want to eat with different people throughout the journey, or you can just walk up. When you walk up, they'll let you know how long the wait's going to be. You check in. So on our cruise, on the left-hand side here was the check-in for people with reservations. On the right-hand side was the check-in for people without reservations. We tended to have at least a 10 to 15 minute wait. Um, sometimes we got asked if we wanted to sit with other people and we just held strong and said, no, we, you know, made a reservation for 7 30 PM for two people. We would like our table for two people. And they would keep asking like, do you want to share? Do you want to share? And we just kept saying no. So if you do want to have a table for just the two of it, you just keep reiterating, you know, that you made the reservation, you want the table for two, and you may have to wait like five or 10 minutes as they reset the table. Now the tables for two Two are very close together so it is like you're eating with other people but you still can eat at your own pace you don't have to wait for the whole table to order we found the food to be pretty good i do like the new menus especially the mexican night we found the vegetarian dishes to be some of our favorites and the indian dishes to be some of our favorites so um, that's something to keep an eye out if you want lobster that will be the second formal night during your sailing uh, one is included and then they charge extra for a dish to the side of the main dining room here on deck four, we're going to find Izumi. This is the Asian hibachi and sushi restaurant. Reservations are required and it is an extra charge. The hibachi is a per person charge and this is where they have a little show and they cook in front of you. And then there's also the sushi. The sushi, you can get a set menu for a charge or you can pay by the item. We decided to pay by the item um, because that we didn't want as much as what was included with the set charge. Also, the set charge always includes dessert, and we don't really eat dessert, so we just kept with paying by the items. As we head towards the front of the ship, we'll come through the casino. The casino is pretty large. It was hopping during our cruise. It was very popular. Remember, the casino can only be open when the ship is at sea. It also has a nice sports bar. You can see it has these tables with the different televisions showing different sporting events. The sporting events will be dependent on what's available via satellite, so they can't guarantee they'll have a certain game, but they absolutely try to have as many of the sporting events as they can. Coming out of the casino, you'll walk through this gallery. So this is a place to highlight some of the art auction items. So these are paintings that may be available for sale during your cruise, or you can speak with the art team and they can let you know, you know, what's available. It's also just like a fun hallway. Uh, we saw a lot of people taking pictures against this backdrop because it's a little different than other places located on the ship. And so as we come around the corner, we will find Studio B. Studio B is the ice skating rink. You can come down here for a free skate. It also gets set up as laser tag and it hosts an ice skating show. It's a really fun show with lots of acrobatics as well as different types of ice skating jumps with contemporary music. Now for these shows, you're gonna to wanna to make reservations in advance. You can do that before you even get on board or through the app once you're on board. You can also just show up about 10 minutes before show 
showtime, they release the seats to anyone. Just next to Studio B, we'll find the Crown Lounge. This is for the upper levels of Royal Caribbean's loyalty program. Inside is a set of uh, different sofas. You can get coffees, and they set out breakfast and snack items throughout the day. The attic was used for comedy and trivia during our cruise. It also was the area for karaoke. So just keep an eye on the program for the different activities that might be available. This staircase connects up to deck five, the promenade. This is a great escape route after going to a show at Studio B when there's just a horde of people trying to leave the area. Right next to it is the smoke-free casino. So the regular casino does allow smoking while it is opened. If you don't want to be around smoke, you can come here to the non-smoking casino. Any of the promotions they're offering in the main casino. So, you know, when they call out what slot machine machine you're at and you can win an extra free play, you get those in the non-smoking casino as well. So you aren't penalized for being in the non-smoking casino. Here's the forward set of elevators. These do get quite busy. Um, bring your patience. It can be very, very crowded after the shows get out, the Studio B shows or any of the shows here in the Royal Theater. The Royal Theater has completely different shows than Studio B. And one of my absolute favorite things they have is a Broadway production of Hairspray. Now it's an abbreviated production, but it was absolutely incredible. It is must see. It's one of the best shows I've ever seen on a cruise ship. And I love that Royal Caribbean keeps its commitment to these types of shows. Now, if you stay on my channel and you subscribe, I'm going to have a ship tour of the Oasis of the Seas coming up, and I did not like that show. So stay tuned. Hopefully you're subscribing. All right, so that is deck four. We're going to head up to deck five, the promenade level, where a lot of the action takes place in the evening. So first thing about deck five, this is the deck where you'll be able to access the outside. This is where the running track and walking track is located. I absolutely love this feature of Oasis class ships because it keeps the running runners and the walkers away from the lounge chairs on the upper decks. The only sort of bad part is that you don't have a ton of views because the lifeboats take up most of the deck area. There are some areas where you can see out to the ocean, but you really are going to be looking at a lot of lifeboats and it's quite long. So you, one lap, it only takes you 2.4 laps to go a mile. So that is a lot better than walking in circles for <laughs> 27 circles equal a mile. I don't know if you've been, seen my, uh, a tour of one of the princess ships, but it's the tiniest walking track on earth. <laughs> it's so small. So, but that's not the case here on deck five with the main walking track. The theater also has an upper level. Um, so you can go in the upper level and the lower level. And again, that hairspray show does recommend reservations, but you can come in about 10 minutes before the start time and just fill in. The upper deck area is a good spot because sometimes they will have seats reserved for suite guests and then they will open those up right before the show starts. So there may be some extra seats there. Now it'll be one or two seats because people tend to spread out, but you can, you can look for seats uh, in the upper deck in case you can't find one somewhere else. This is another area for karaoke and trivia and just evening fun. Um, actually, I don't, you know what? I don't know that the attic had karaoke a lot on our sailings. It was more in this lounge right here. Um, it's right behind the Starbucks. Yes, that is a real Starbucks. It is an extra charge. It's not included in any of the beverage packages, but pro tip, there are some coffee shops and I'll point them out through this tour that have Starbucks coffee that is included in a drinks package. But if you buy it here at this Starbucks outlet, it is not included. Boleros is one of the nightlife bars. There is a live Latin band that plays here in the evenings. Yes, people absolutely dance on this cool dance floor. It's a great place to hang out for a pre or post dinner drink. Um, has a great bartender, great cocktail list. You can sit here around the bar. This is one of my favorite people watching spots on the ship because you're enjoying the live music. You're watching people dance. Uh, you're interacting with the bartenders. So it's a lot of fun. Um, one of my favorite evening spots. The other 
part of the promenade is the shopping. So you're going to find several shops. This area is very lively at night. So you have people shopping. They'll bring out additional tables and racks. If there's going to be a sale, you can get all types of duty free shopping, tax free shopping, jewelry, whatever you need. Sorrento's, this is the pizza shop. So if you are looking for some pizza throughout the day, this is where you're going to head. These tables also get kind of busy in the evening because people are just sitting, listening to the music, the promenade. In addition to the band in Boleros, they will have a band just playing here in the promenade. So this area can be a bit crowded, but you can come on in here and grab a slice of pizza and be on your way throughout the day. So here are some more of the shops. Now notice these rooms up here. These are the promenade ocean view. So you look over the promenade. They're not super quiet. The interesting thing to know, the pub is one of the first bars that's open during the day. So if you need some Baileys with your Starbucks coffee, you're going to want to head here. You can see there that it's set up for a guitar player. So a guitar player will play throughout the evening. This is also a location for different trivia games um, as it goes on. We liked really liked sitting out here and enjoying the music. The band usually plays up here if the band is going to um, play here on the promenade. There's also a quartet that is from the orchestra that plays. This is where you'll find all of your Royal Caribbean branded items. So if you want to get a Royal Caribbean sweatshirt or t-shirt, all of that's going to be here. Now, Cafe Promenade, this was one of the places I was saying you can get Starbucks coffee, uh, not this coffee that's included, but if you order a specialty coffee here, it is made from Starbucks coffee and it is included in your drinks packages. I know it's super confusing. You can also get any of these sweet treats. Those are included with your cruise fare. They are not an extra charge. So depending on how committed you are to the Starbucks experience, you may want to check out what they have at Cafe Promenade uh, if you do have a drinks package. Across the way is the next cruise desk. You can get additional perks on board credit. If you book your next cruise while you're on board this cruise, you can also prepay for a deposit. Now, this is one of my favorite bars, the Rising Tide Bar. This will move between Deck 5, where we are right now, and Deck 8, Central Park, which is coming later in the tour. Guest services, this is where you're going to want to go if you have any questions, any problems with your bill. I absolutely recommend checking your account throughout the cruise. You can do that on the app. You don't want to be in line the last day with everybody who finally like woke up and checked their account. People make mistakes. People give the wrong room number. You don't want to get charged for drinks you didn't have or maybe a uh, a specialty dinner you didn't have. So keep checking that account throughout the cruise and try to address it earlier rather than later. The Bionic Bar is an extra charge. It's not included in the drinks packages and the robot makes your drink. I hardly ever see people using this. Have you been on Royal Caribbean with the Bionic Bar? Have you seen people getting drinks here? Do you think it was kind of like a gimmick and now it's died down? The port and shopping desk, this is where you want to stop by if you have particular questions about shopping in the ports or getting coupons. The shore excursions has these kiosks um, or iPads kiosk where you can book your shore excursion. You can also book a shore excursion in the app. The team will have presentations throughout the cruise or there is someone there at the desk if you have any questions questions. Coming through the main elevator bank, this is a good way to kind of sneak through coming through the middle because people are waiting on the other side. And then here on deck five, we will get to the very, very top of the dining room. So if you've kept up, the dining room spans from deck three to deck five. The different decks will have different timings. So make sure you pay attention to your card or in the program, whether you're my time dining or your set dining times, which dining room that's going to be. There'll also be different dining rooms available for breakfast or for brunch. Some days they have brunch uh, on sea days instead of a lunch. Definitely get the chicken sandwich. I'm a big fan. Uh, but then here, so then this is kind of that last level of the main dining room and you can see the beautiful chandelier and all the great decorations. Leaving the dining room, we are going to head up to deck six, a reminder that we are all the way at the aft or the back of the ship. Now, if you want to find your way around the ship, as you're facing the front of the ship, the left side is the port side. Left has four letters and so does port. And the right side is the starboard side. So you may see in the program things that say like deck six port or deck six aft starboard side. And that's how you'll know where they are. So deck six aft has the boardwalk. So this is a circus 
themed, very fun area for both little kids and kids at heart alike. As you walk in, you'll notice that they take you through how carousel horses are made, which I think is kind of fun. It's a, a lost art of the old carousel horses. Uh, to the left, you're going to have the dog house. So this is a number of different specialty hot dogs. They have different types of sausages, different types of hot dogs, different types of toppings. You also have an uh, arcade. These are all extra charged. These aren't included, but the carousel is included and the lineup does start in the morning. Over here, we have a candy store. So I think it's, it's called Sugar Beach. You can get extra charge ice cream as well as candy by the pound and be really careful because you can end up with $20 worth of candy pretty easily. Across the way here is Playmakers. I think Royal Caribbean has created the best sports bar at sea with the Playmakers concept. It has a ton of TVs. You could order off a menu with all of your sports bar favorites like wings and jalapeno poppers. Now it is an extra charge, but you can get it included in a specialty dining package. The, the outside usually has a ton of tables. They were cleaning here. This place was so packed for the NCAA championship. It was so fun. It is just a terrific concept. And the best part is you can sit outside and see the carousel. So if you have little ones, you can just watch them running around riding that carousel as you enjoy the game. Johnny Rockets is open for breakfast. It is included for breakfast. I really like their breakfast sandwiches. For lunch and dinner, it is an extra charge and it has the typical Johnny Rockets menu with the different hamburgers and shakes. This is where the abyss slide ends up. So you start all the way at one of the top decks and we'll see that next to the flow rider and slide all the way down to deck number six. <laughs> it's huge. Now it does get a little cumbersome having one adult at the top and one adult at the bottom if you have little ones. This is the Aqua Theater. It is absolutely incredible. I don't think there's anything else like it at sea. Royal Caribbean has cornered the market on this show. It features synchronized swimming, acrobats, high divers, dancing, and then whatever this is called. There's also a tightrope walker. So definitely a must-see show on your Symphony of the Sea cruise. There's also two rock climbing walls. Rock climbing is included. They'll publish the timing within the schedule. Now we've only seen one wall open at a time. I don't know if um, we just haven't been on a busy enough sailing, but that's all there is. There's also this cool little play area. This was really handy in the mornings when having breakfast at Johnny Rockets. And keep your eye out for this band. They are so fun and a great way to start the day. We saw them in the mornings. If you're curious about what the boardwalk view balconies look like, this is it. You look out over the balcony, but the people directly across from you can see right into your cabin. And I'll show you what I mean because we had a central park balcony and that's coming up next. So then here's the carousel one more time and the sugar beach candy area. The boardwalk also housed the silent disco one night during our sailing. So they use it for special events in addition to just having a great place to hang out. It does get more crowded in the evenings, especially on the nights where there's a show in the aqua theater. Heading forward on deck six, the loyalty desk is located just outside the schooner bar. The schooner bar has these great seats. These are perfect seats for the parade that happens on the promenade. The loyalty desk is if you have any questions about your crown and anchor society status. So as you cruise more on Royal Caribbean, you get more points and then you get more perks. You can see the piano bar here, the schooner bar hosts the evening sing-along piano player. So this is one of the later night bars because of people hanging out and listening to the piano. There's also some trivia in here. It'll say on the program what to expect the bar gets very crowded here and these seats are frequently taken because it is great people watching spot and you can see here people already have their seats turned ready to watch the parade comes down this main promenade area it's in the afternoon on one of the sea days it's straight across on the other side of deck six is picture this this is where you would go to download any of the pictures the professional photographers on board have taken the photographers will be there when you get off the ship to take pictures in port or they'll walk around the ship taking different pictures it's free to have your picture taken you just have to pay if you want to download 
download it. Right in front of that is the shore excursion. There's a number of iPads where you can reserve a shore excursion or there are crew members there ready to answer any questions you may have. The shore excursions, you may want to book in advance. Some of the more popular ones do sell out, especially if you're visiting Perfect Day at Coco Cay, Royal Caribbean's private island. It's a great idea to book anything you want to do there in advance. Now we're going to head to all the way forward on deck six. You actually can't walk through through uh, where the schooner bar was. So you have to head into where the staterooms are located and walk through the hallway to get all the way to the front. So here we are. We made it. World's fastest walker. Thank you very much. And this is where the Vitality Spa and Fitness Center are located. The spa has uh, services like facials, massages, pedicures, manicures, hair styling. It is all an extra charge. You can make reservations available through the app. And I was waiting for someone to walk by. That's why I awkwardly stood there. But heading inside, there is a small cafe that has a juice bar and it also has coffee. So this is a hot tip. If you don't want to stand in line at Cafe Promenade or at the Starbucks, Vitality Cafe also has specialty coffees here, deck six all the way forward. You can also get smoothies and juices. Here's a peek into the salon area. So you can see this is where they do the pedicures and manicures as well as the hair styling services. They do offer specials throughout the cruise. So it is a kind of uh, gamble. If you book in advance, make sure you're getting a sale. Royal Caribbean frequently runs sales on things that are available through the cruise planner. So keep an eye on that. Otherwise I would just wait to get on board. If you didn't see a sale come through because they have daily specials where they're combined different services and give you a discount on all of those. So kind of, as we wind our way back through the spa, you can see some of the equipment. They have fitness trainers on board that can evaluate you. If you want to start a fitness program, during your cruise, they have fitness classes. Some are included, some are an extra charge. The extra charge ones you do need to sign up for in advance. And I'm just trying to avoid some people. You can see in there that is a fitness room for one of the classes. And then they have all kinds of fitness equipment available. So if you need a bike, a treadmill, an elliptical, all of that is here and available. They also have a free weight section. It is a really large gym. Down these stairs will take you down to deck five to the walking track. So you could include the walking track as part of your workout. So heading back into the main area, you can see this forward elevator bank. There are a number of different elevators. It is really important to pay attention <laughs> once you hit the button. They do close quickly. So we would station one of us near the front two, one of us near the back two, because you really have to kind of hustle and be paying attention in order to grab it. You can see that green light lighting up. That means that elevator is going up. It would be red if it was going down. All right, so now we have made it to deck eight. This is all the way forward, and this is where the Central Park is located. But first, let's take a look at our Central Park balcony cabin. Welcome to a Central Park balcony cabin. So we have to have the two beds together. You can also have them separated. You will need a card to turn on the lights. There was a card in there for us. Otherwise we just bring a membership card, like a Costco membership card to put in there. The shower head, a handheld shower head, and it was decent size. It was tall enough for us. We're over six feet tall and had enough space. Now it is a combo body wash and shampoo. So you may want to bring your own. There wasn't a ton of storage four items in the bathroom. There's only these three small shelves. So we did use the under the sink storage. One of the closets is mostly shelves and a couple drawers. You could fit some shirts hanging up. You can see my husband put his CPAP machine in there because there was not a lot of room on the bedside table, especially since the phone takes up part of it. And the outlet is only on one side. The TV was good size. It worked well. It was kind of hard to watch from the couch. So you really have to watch it from the bed. And then you can see here, here was the outlet. So we ran an extension cord across the back of the bed uh, for the CPAP machine. Now this is the larger closet. It does have two rods. So you could have uh, more hanging up in there, but if you have dresses, you're going to want to use it for most of that. The couch was very comfortable and large. Then you also have a little desk area and more outlets. So you can see we have USB outlets, two, three North American outlets, as well as a European outlet. Heading over here, you'll find more drawers. This is where the hairdryer is located. 
Uh, the bottled waters were from our perks from being a Royal Caribbean diamond. And then there is a fridge. Now this is not a medication fridge. This will not keep medication cold. If you need to keep medication cold, you have to contact special services to request a medication fridge. But then here is what you want to know about this cabin. This is the view. I was sad for the first three days that you cannot see the ocean from here at all. It is really hard to know where you are at any given time, but it kind of grew on me over the course of the cruise. It was nice to sit out here in the evening and listen to the band that plays in Central Park, but you have no privacy. You can see into the cabins across from you, so be sure to keep those shades closed, especially at night when you have the lights on. We definitely saw some people in their underwear by accident, but that's the Central Park balcony. Would you stay in it? Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious. Now we'll head down to Central Park. Central Park is open air, so you'll find umbrellas at all the entrances as well as the entrance to all the restaurants and shops because if it's raining, it's raining here in Central Park and you still need to get to your dining reservation. Vintages is the wine bar. This is gonna have the biggest selection of wine on board, so a great place to come. And they also have snacks. This is an a la carte menu. You pay by the item. So we really enjoyed kind of stopping here and having a quick appetizer on the nights where maybe we just wanted to get a salad at the buffet. Across is some of the higher end shopping, Bulgari, Hubbard are there on the other side of Central Park. And then Vintages also has outdoor tables. These are really popular in the evenings, especially when the band is playing. Heading further into the park, all of these plants are taken care of by a group of about four specialist. They will have a tour on one of the mornings. Look for it in the program. If you want to learn more about plants or how they do this at sea, definitely go. We really enjoyed it. It took about half an hour. Jamie's Italian is the specialty Italian restaurant on board. It is extra charge. The bread is delicious. Definitely save room for that. This is the burrata mozzarella. It was fantastic. It had great flavors, hazelnuts on it. The calamari was crispy, perfectly fried, not too rubbery. This trip pasta dish was just okay. I probably wouldn't order it again. And the lasagna was decent. It wasn't the best lasagna we've ever had, but it held up. It had a good flavorful tomato sauce. You can't go wrong with the chocolate brownie with ice cream or the mile high key lime pie. So definitely lots of great choices here. You can pre-book that in advance uh, through the website, your cruise planner, or the app. Sometimes they run discounts on it. You can also book it once you're on board. Straight across the way is another one of the quick service included options, Park Cafe. This doesn't get as much traffic as I thought it would. It does have breakfast and lunch daily. You have options of grab and go pre-made sandwiches and wraps, whole fruit. There's also a selection of desserts and pastries throughout the day. You can get made to order sandwiches and salads as well. Heading across the ship to the other side, you have this kind of hidden area. Now, this is a great area for hiding ducks. So you'll find a lot of people duck hunting in Central Park. It's one of the popular spaces to hide ducks um, because of all the plants. The gardeners don't love it. So please don't put them in a way where someone would have to like endanger a plant to be able to get to it or crawl on something or it impedes a sprinkler or something like that. Um, across the way here, we have the trellis bar. This was one of our favorite hotspots in the evening. It is lovely here at night. You can hear the music from the band and the guitar player. And that was our cabin right there on the corner looking over trellis bar. They have an exceptional espresso martini. To the right, you're going to find the steakhouse. The steakhouse is open for lunch and dinner. It is an extra charge. And this is the rising tide bar. So remember we saw that down on deck five, it will come all the way up to deck eight and it will tell you when the next departure is. So usually it arrives about 20, 30 minutes before that next departure. So you can get on, get a cocktail and prepare for the ride. So 150 Central Park is the other specialty restaurant. Again, this is an extra charge. You wanna get your reservations in advance. This also houses Taste of Royal where you sit down for a meal that has highlights dishes from all of the specialty restaurants on board and even some from across the fleet. So that's kind of a fun thing to do. We did it on this sailing and we really enjoyed it. It was a great experience and the food was absolutely delicious. Coming out of Central Park, we'll head back towards the elevator bank. And oh, another great place to hide ducks is in the 
umbrella stand. So it was raining one day when we got there. So we grabbed an umbrella, opened it, and a duck fell down on our head, which was kind of fun. So if you're looking for a place to hide ducks. Behind Central Park, we'll find Dazzles. This is the music lounge, music hall, you may have heard it called on other ships. This has a nightly band and the band is terrific. This place gets hopping in the evenings. On our ceiling, they also had church services in here because it was Holy Week. Um, we traveled between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. If you're a Christian, they, they had services available here. But this is a beautiful space. You overlook the back of the ship. So we're all the way in the front now of deck eight. Um, you see the pianos, there's a small bar, and then heading upstairs, you'll find additional seating. These are great seats right here. If you want to have good people watching, get a good view of the band. Um, I love these seats here. So you would enter on deck nine if you wanted to grab those. I uh, love how it's so open air. So definitely keep an eye on the program to see what the band is. Um, one on one of our sailings, it was a Beatles theme band. So that was pretty fun. They usually have some type of theme or some type of music that they play throughout the cruise. We are on deck nine. So now we will head up to deck 12. Again, we're in the forward or front part of the ship. And this is where another specialty restaurant is located. Wonderland is an additional charge. And the idea behind this is you are entering the looking glass into the world of Alice in Wonderland. So think Mad Hatter, Think little blue pills, little red pills, all types of fun, experimental things, both in the food and in the cocktails. And you can come here to the bar without having a dinner reservation. We came up and we tried the uh, cocktail that involves the cotton candy. It basically just turns into a regular Cosmo, but see how they kind of put a fun twist on it. Another cocktail, which is kind of like a margarita, had a foam on top. So definitely come here and have a cocktail, even if you decide not to eat here. Now, the food is a little bit more interesting. So if you're the type of person that just wants some meat and potatoes or something simple, you're probably not gonna love this restaurant, but for everybody else, I think it's worth a try, at least on one of your sailings on Royal Caribbean, because it is something different and something you maybe won't experience on a land-based vacation because you don't regularly go to these type of restaurants. It also has some pretty fun photo ops here if you're looking for a good spot to get some interesting photographs maybe for your Instagram. All right, our tour continues. We're gonna head up the stairs to deck 14. Yes, uh, deck 13 is missing on the Symphony of the Seas. Here we'll find a great hiding place or somewhere quiet if you do have to work on your trip. This is the Seven of Hearts card and game room. This is designed to give families a space to play games so you're not taking up valuable real estate in the lounges. They have large tables, they have games, they have a small computer area if you need to check your email or maybe check in for your flight and you have the Wi-Fi package, they have a small book exchange here as well. So that is deck 14 midship. To get to the front of the ship, we have to go back through the staterooms again. So here we go. <laughs> All right, we are forward or all the way at the front of deck 14. And here is where the kids programs are located, including the Puzzle Break Center. The Puzzle Break Center is an escape room. It is an extra charge. You can sign up for it in the app. You do need to have a reservation or you can try to come right at the time it starts because sometimes people don't show up and they will let you join at the last minute. And if you like escape rooms on land, you'll definitely like this one as well. It's just a set of puzzles that you try to solve as a group and you will have other guests in your group with you. It's not designed just to be for one family at a time. Royal Caribbean has a lot of kids programming on board. Here is the nursery team. So this is the Babies and Tots program. It is an extra charge and you do need a reservation. You can make some reservations in advance and then once on board, you may be able to make additional reservations. The supervised program has all different types of activities. You can drop your kiddos off and they can participate in crafts, in video games, things like dodgeball. So lots of going on in the supervised kids program. Up to deck 15, 
Again, we're coming up the forward staircase. This is one of my favorite whirlpools on any ship at sea because it has televisions. I think this was the place to be during the NCAA championship. You could watch the games while you were soaking in the tub with an ocean view. I mean, what's better than that? Here, all the way at the front of the ship, we'll find the solarium. This is for adults only, and they do try to enforce it, but the problem is the solarium, which I'll show you in a minute, allows kids, so... You know, you might see a kid here or there, but it really is designed for adults. Now, there are chair hogs when it comes to the solarium. Every morning I got up here pretty early and a lot of the front row seats already had towels on them. So if you really want a front row seat, you got to get here early. I will say, though, that the pool attendant was policing it. If people were not sitting there for, you know, a long time, at half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, he would come and remove the towels and their um, items. So they were really trying to fight against the chair hogs, but it took a minute. There is a bar right here in the middle. It closes pretty early, I think around 9 p.m., so that's something to keep in mind. But it is nice at night because you get the open air breeze. This solarium is open air. It's not completely covered. And you have these like kind of cool structure elements that light up at night. And then you have the whirlpools and pools kind of going down to the front of the solarium. We're gonna speed things up a little bit just because this side of the solarium is exactly the same as the other side. We walked by the solarium takes up the entire front of deck 15, plus a couple steps down so you see the pools go down to deck 14 as well. The area also houses a solarium bistro. This was open for breakfast and dinner during our cruise. This is a buffet. Children are allowed. So just because it's called the solarium bistro does not mean it's adults only. Kids are allowed and you get to the main entrance by heading back into the elevator bank and then you'll find the main entrance now whenever we checked in they did ask if we had reservations but they were able to seat us if we didn't one difference about this buffet is things are individually plated so you're not really sharing tongs with a lot of people which we liked i really enjoyed the coconut shrimp each evening they also had a made to order option so this was the night they had the made to order pasta station all right, let's finally get outside and check out this pool deck. How are you doing? Do you need a snack? This is a huge ship, so this tour is very, very long. But here is where all the outside fun action is. You have the two slides over here. You have one slide on this side with the basin that you kind of spin around in. You go up the stairs on either side to get into line to ride them. We are overlooking Central Park. That's why Central Park is open air and you might need an umbrella sometime. The Perfect Storm does have a minimum height requirement of 48 inches so you want to make sure to measure your kiddos before you go so we don't set anybody up for disappointment then there is a sign with all the additional warnings and things to keep in mind if you do want to ride the perfect storm slides they are set up so you could kind of race if you wanted they come out in the same general area so now you can see we're kind of like back to where we started with that whirlpool and the two tvs here's a set of stairs up to deck 16 if you want to kind of get a great overview of the pool deck the these are really the only shaded chairs we'll see as we kind of go around the pool deck there isn't a lot of shade available there aren't any umbrellas which makes sense you know it can be really windy the slides come down right here and then you have the pools that kind of butt up to the open area for central park lifeguards are available and watching out over these pools but please keep an eye on your kiddos as well and they do have life jackets available if your kids aren't confident swimmers. You do need to check out your pool towels. They will take your card and then they you have to bring them back. Now, you know, originally I thought this was because people might be stealing pool towels, but I actually think it's just to get us to clean up after ourselves because everybody takes their towels back at the end of the day because they don't want to get charged. All right, here's one of the pool bars right here in the middle. Lots of pool waiters walking around, but if you need that drink right away, you're going to want to walk up to the pool. There are whirlpools available looking over the open air areas. Uh, here's another one of the pools facing the inside of the ship. So basically chairs are on the outside, pools are lined up around the inside, and you can see it overlooks the open area here, the other part of Central Park. Walking around, we're going to take a closer look at the Splash Park. So this is for smaller kids. Uh, if you want to have them 
not swim. So if these are for the kids who maybe aren't big swimmers, they much prefer to be at the splash park. There's a nice whirlpool right next to it where you could actually be in and keep an eye on your kids. Plus a bar right nearby. Royal Caribbean knows what they're doing. And then here's the splash park. So you can see it has a couple of smaller slides, the big bucket, you have the different fountains, spraying. So this isn't fully on yet. I was kind of there a little bit early, but lots of areas for the smaller kids to play. Um, maybe those that are still in diapers. So this is a great option here in addition to the pools throughout the ship. The bathrooms on the pool deck are going to be located near the elevator banks. So look for wherever you can go inside and then they'll be painted on the door a person. So in this case, this is the ladies room. There's a woman in a bathing suit painted on the door. On the other side of the deck will be the men's room. So they're on opposite sides of the deck right near where you enter to go to the elevators. They have a special thing on deck called Unbox. I think this is genius. So it's basically a set of vending machines that have things you may have forgotten. It has phone chargers, sunscreen, uh, different types of medications if you needed something you know an aspirin or an ibuprofen around the corner from this is the arcade all of this is an extra charge it looks like your regular bowling alley arcade so it has your air hockey foosball the claw game different types of regular video games this is a great area in case it's raining but again it is an extra charge they also have ice cream on both sides of the deck it is served to you you cannot build your own ice cream you have to ask the nice crew member to build it for you as we head towards the back of the ship we will find la loca fresh so this is mexican serve yourself kind of a buffet so they have different kinds of quesadillas you can make a taco you can make a burrito they have dessert and they also have this cool salsa bar so you can get all your different types of hot sa sauces and salsa to make your own mexican lunch this tended to be a little less busy than the buffet definitely want to wash your hands they have a sink available if you're coming right from like basketball here the basketball court is open they have different games throughout the week so this is being set up for pickleball we actually did a pickleball lesson it was one of the extra charge things you could book on board and it was great I hadn't played pickleball before my husband had been playing and I really wanted to learn how to play we did it the first evening that we boarded and then every day they had open pickleball hours where you could just jump in and play so if you're a pickleball fan definitely the symphony of the seas will have what you want but they also do have it open for for basketball or for volleyball so there's different games throughout the week it'll all be in the program uh, you can get look at a printed program or you can find the information in the app now all the way to the back of the ship is where you're gonna find the flow rider so these are surf simulators and here on the symphony of the seas there are two this flow rider was generally used for the beginners, so people starting on their stomachs or learning to kneel. You do need to sign in and have a parent or guardian or you as the adult sign a waiver and get a wristband to join the line for the flow rider. This is the abyss. This is a dry slide. It's not a water slide. It goes all the way from up here down to deck six at the boardwalk. This flow rider was used for people who could stand up. So this was the advanced flow rider throughout the course of our sailing. You can also take a zip line here. So this is where you line up to go on the zip line and the zip line just goes straight across this open area. So you'll start in that corner and then go all the way across to this corner. So super short ride. Mini golf is also included. You just grab a golf club and start playing. It was open pretty late into the evening, which was nice because it tended to be a little bit cooler and less popular. These areas up here are the major suites. So these are those two story suites as well as the suite restaurant and the suite lounge. The I think it's really funny that that main suite in the middle that kind of has a staircase uh, play area. It doesn't have a full ocean view. I don't know. I wish I would think I would want a full ocean view, but anyway, here is more of the mini golf course. Now, all of these are included, the abyss, the flow rider and mini golf all included in your cruise fare. Don't need to pay extra. Heading back towards midship, we will find a couple of ping pong tables. These are nice and sheltered from the wind. Just the paddles and balls are always there. So you can just grab them a set of picnic tables. So if you need another spot to take your Mexican food from Loco Fresh, that's a good area. And then this was one of my favorite spots. It's shaded. It's out of the way. It's quiet. And you had absolutely incredible ocean views. 
both when we're docked and not. And these are not chaise loungers, but they are low to the ground. So if you have a hard time getting up out of a seat, you might want to avoid these. There is a second soft serve machine on the other side of the ship in case the one you know, gets too busy. You have a couple of different options. Heading inside, we'll see a peek into the living room. This is the teen club area. They have this hangout area. And then they also plan activities around the ship. So they have like a basketball tournament. They'll have dodgeball tournaments. So just keep an eye on the program. But if they just want a place to come and hang out, there's plenty of space in here. If they want to play games, play video games, the living room is going to be the spot to be. So heading into the midship of deck 15, we're going to head up to the Wind Jammer Cafe. That's the buffet. It was open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and later in the evening for snacks. And if you head to the middle here, you can go up the piano staircase and it absolutely plays music. So you can play a little song. I was ecstatic to find this. I watched the movie Big. I don't know if you did. Let me know in the comments, but it was so fun to kind of recreate that little scene from big I you know pretended I was Tom Hanks but definitely check this out don't just take the elevator up to the wind jammer on 16 uh, try to enter from deck 15 on the magical piano staircase as you enter into the Windjammer, there is one way to enter and one way to exit, and they'll make sure you know it. Royal Caribbean does a really good job of encouraging people to wash their hands prior to entering. You've been on other Royal Caribbean ships. You may remember Washi Washi, Yummy Yummy. That is the song that is sung as you enter. So there are the included beverages. Included beverages are hot tea, coffee, lemonade, iced tea, and juices at breakfast. You may also see a fruit punch. Now, the buffet is basically separated into these little stations that have different items all the way around them. So this was the salad bar. It was make your own salad. It also had the breads, bread sticks. Then there was like more of a home style or whatever the theme was. So this day they had the soups, they had Mexican, they had your charcuterie board with your cheese and meats. So you can make whatever you need there. There's also a grill area that has your hamburgers and hot dogs, your chili to top it off, your buns, and they have French fries, chicken tenders, everything that you would get kind of at a fast food restaurant is to the side. Then further in the middle, you'll have your fresh grilled meats, your carved items. They had carved turkey this day. That was very exciting. I love turkey. And then kind of your home style side. So you're like mashed potatoes, um, different types of beans, some vegetarian options. The silver is going to be next to the plates. Um, you can find it there. They also had Asian options. So if you wanted a curry or a stew with rice, they have that. Part of the beverage program, you can buy a cup that goes to the freestyle machines. The one in the buffet was always on, always working. The other ones around the ship were kind of hit or miss. There are those juice machines I told you about. And then all the way in the back here, you're going to find your dessert selection and more of the Asian entrees and a smaller salad bar. So you can come all the way to the back if you want to try that. There's also made to order stir fry for lunch or dinner and then, you know, made to order omelets. And then the exit is kind of near the back of the buffet. So here we are on deck 16. So this will just give you a better overview of the pool area. So there's those pools that I was talking about that kind of butt up to the open area in the middle. They're pretty good size. I mean, they do get full though. So if you have dreams of swimming laps, this probably isn't going to work. These private cabanas are available for rent. They have different pricing depending if it's a sport day or a sea day. The bar is available up here. It comes with like a little cooler with waters in it. You have your a dedicated server. And I think it's just nice to have a place on a sea day. You're not fighting for a chair or anything like that. It also has shade because remember, the only other places to get shade are underneath the deck. You can't really get a lot of shade in the open areas. So here's a better look at that whirlpool and then some of the additional pools right there by the water slides. You can see how high up the water slides go there. This area also has the entrance to the suite deck. This is an exclusive area for guests who book a suite. So they have the suite deck, the suite restaurant, and a suite lounge that are all separate for suite guests. And you can access that through the staircase or from inside. And you can see here, this is what it looks like for the male bathrooms. And again, they're right next to where you would enter 
to go to the elevators and we're almost to the solarium so this is the top area of the solarium heading inside we're going to check out one more specialty restaurant and that is hooked seafood as you can guess from the name this is all about the seafood all of the time it was open for some lunches and dinner every night during our cruise it is famous for the fish sandwich at the lunch it comes with its own bib and a show definitely recommend ordering that if you like a good fried fish sandwich it also has raw bar so that includes like oysters you can get shrimp this is a must stop if you're a seafood lover you do want to make reservations you can make them in advance through the cruise planner or the app once you're on board it i like how they added this little bar here we've been on it on other ships and it didn't have kind of this raw bar seating so i think that's a lot of fun and then if you look out this looks over the solarium bistro so we talked before about the solarium bistro is a buffet for breakfast and dinner and then here is what the solarium bistro looks like inside so that is the royal caribbean symphony of the seas we made it yay let me know what you think are you ready to book this for you, your next cruise email angie at tripswithangie.com to find out what the current offer is for youtube viewers